What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at what I consider the coolest retro case for an x86 single board computer ever made. Now recently on the channel we took a look at the all new Odroid H4. This is actually a really nice little single board computer. Base price coming in at 99 bucks. You can also get one with a more powerful CPU up to 199. But this little board does make a really great little emulation device. Whether you want to run Windows or Linux, you could always install something like Botocera if you want to. And in my original video, I wasn't able to show off their brand new case because it actually wasn't announced yet. And this is something that I've actually been wanting to see for quite some time. In fact, in the past, I've actually built something very similar, but it did cost me a lot more because I had to source a lot of different parts. But now Odroid has a very similar case up on their website known as the Cube, and it's going for 25 bucks. Obviously, it's GameCube inspired, and this was specifically designed for the H4, but I'm going to pick up a couple more. I'm going to modify these, and there's not much modification needed to add a different mini PC inside of this unit. Personally, I think they've done a great job kind of recreating this. It's built of ABS plastic, and it does come with a PCB, so we've got four USB ports up front. In my opinion, the whole setup is really awesome, and coming in at 25 bucks, it's really hard to beat something like this if you're looking to build a GameCube-inspired mini PC. And even this front PCB with those four USB ports on it has a USB Type-C input, so you could plug this into a different system. But keep in mind, it's also got a function and a power button that's going to work specifically for the H4 using that GPIO cable that's included with the kit. It's got enough room inside of the case for a 2.5 inch drive, and if you're going to be using the H4, that's more than enough for GameCube and Wii emulation. The H4 Ultra is actually a much more powerful little system with an N305 CPU, but that's coming in at $199. And even then, once you put everything together, still a pretty inexpensive little setup with a really clean look. I've got a couple extra little accessories that Odroid sells that'll go right along with this case, like a fan, so we can keep this thing nice and cool. I've also got their SATA adapter kit. Now keep in mind, the H4 non-plus model doesn't have SATA ports on the unit itself. So this is gonna be kind of irrelevant for that $99 model. Another thing that changes from the H4 to the H4 Plus is the fact that the Plus has two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. But if you're looking to keep the cost way down, I would definitely just go with the $99 H4. A lot of that stuff is unnecessary for an emulation setup. So let's go ahead and get this thing together. First up, I'm going to tackle the front I.O. for USB ports. And again, this does have that GPIO connector. Plus, it's got USB Type-C in. So if you were using this with a different system, it would work. You're just not going to get access to that function and power button up front. We'll use three of these screws to secure it to the front plate. Okay, so we've got that taken care of. Next thing we need to do is grab the H4, and we've got two standoffs that need to go on the board itself in order for it to fit correctly in the case. Everything is included. We'll just go ahead and attach both of these near the rear I.O. And speaking of the rear I.O., the cube case does come with that rear I.O. plate. And as you can see, one of the Ethernet ports is blocked off. Again, for the $99 version, you're not going to need to knock this out. I'm going to leave it there because I might downgrade later on if I can get my hands on one of the cheaper versions. We'll just slide this right down into the bottom half of the shell. And everything lines up quite nicely. Again, the shell itself is made of ABS. You could paint this to make it look original. You could go with the different color scheme if you want to. But right now, they're only offering it in black. So yeah, I mean, if you did want that, you know, GameCube color scheme, that's something you definitely have to do. But now we'll just go ahead and get this secure with these four screws. I'll grab that GPIO cable, plug one half into the board, and they do have full instructions over on their website. Front I.O. panel also needs to be plugged into the other end. And I'm really glad that we have that power button, you know, externally. It's not one that you have to screw in or anything like that. Everything works over GPIO. We're actually almost done here. Last thing I need to do is actually install the fan because I don't want this thing thermal throttling. And even though it's a very low wattage chip we have here with that Intel N97, there's a chance in an enclosed case we would hit thermal throttle, even with that large heat sink on it, given the chip we're using. So having a nice little fan here to just blow a little bit of air across the unit is gonna work great. We've got plenty of ventilation on each side of the shell itself, so it's gonna flow right through. And the last thing we need to do is just put the top half of the shell on. It's going to be secured with four screws from the bottom. It also comes with some rubber feet so it won't slide around on the desk. 
And once it's complete, it looks a little something like this. I'm a huge fan of the look, and I do love the price here. Again, in the past, I have put a mini PC in a GameCube. I've got a video up on my channel, lots of cutting, lots of little knickknacks that we needed to buy. But seeing that they have this case on their website for 25 bucks, I think this is going to make those projects a lot easier for more people out there. Since I'm using the H4 Plus around back here, we've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, but I kept one blocked off with that I.O. plate. Two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, full-size HDMI, two display, two full-size display ports, optical audio, and two 3.5 millimeter audio jacks. And up front, with this case installed, we've got our power button, a function button, and four USB 2.0 ports. For a lot of people out there who are strictly going to be using this for a little emulation setup, I would recommend installing something like Bado Serra. You could actually run it from a USB drive. But I've already got Windows 11 installed on the uh, M.2 SSD that I have. 512 gigabyte PCIe 3.0 drive. I've also got 16 gigs of RAM. And as you can see here, we've got that quad core Intel N97. Not the most powerful chip in the world. We've only got four cores and four threads, but it will boost up the 3.6 gigahertz. And when it comes to emulation on this machine, we can do up to PS2. Now, it will admit that there are some PS2 games that you will have to drop that resolution down on. But in Windows, using DirectX 11 or even Vulkan with PCSX2, I've had a really good time. And one of the main reasons I would recommend installing Bado Serra is just for that really nice front end. Now, of course, in Windows, you could go with Emulation Station. But personally, I like using LaunchBox and BigBox. And I've already got it set up, ready to go here. And whenever I'm using a Windows machine with emulation and I need a front end, this is exactly what I go to. But there are other front ends out there. It's really up to you. And there's more than just emulation that I'm going to be doing with this mini PC. That's why I opted to use Windows instead of something like Bado Serra. So yeah, this is Big Box, and you could always install Linux, something like Bado Serra, if you wanted to, but you know, I wanted to leave Windows on the drive that I have in here. Plus, I've already got LaunchBox set up on an external drive, so I figured I'd go ahead and show it off here. Does work quite well on this little machine. And of course, we've got a GameCube shell for this mini PC. GameCube and Wii is going to be one of the main things a lot of people want to run on this, but there's tons of other emulators that we can use here. Now I'll tell you, this system doesn't have enough power to do a lot of the PS3 games or even PS4. But when it comes to the lower end stuff under Wii, we've got more than enough power with this N97. And uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of artwork, bunch of games installed here. There are a ton of different themes that we can use with Big Box. You can download them directly from within the application. So if I head here, just scroll on down here to start themes demo. And I've got a bunch installed here. It's just gonna give us an idea of what kind of themes are here, what they look like, also the name. We can let this run through in kind of an attract mode system. But yeah, I mean, it's fully customizable here. And since I've got Windows installed, I've also got some PC games that run pretty decently on this system. A lot of lower end stuff, but yeah, Cuphead, Battletoads, all that stuff is going to be good to go on this N97. But of course, a lot of people really want to do some emulation on this system. So let's go ahead and check out some GameCube. And uh, I'll just find a game here. Actually, let's go with that one that we just had. Sonic Adventure 2 on the GameCube. And with Big Box here, we've got these really nice launch animations, and there's also pause screens built in. But the first game we have is Sonic Adventure 2. We're using the Dolphin emulator, DirectX 11 back in 720p. And to tell you the truth, I haven't gone up to 1080 with this. I'm pretty sure a lot of these games would run just fine at 1080. I just figured it looked good enough at 720p, but just seeing the kind of performance we're getting here, yeah, most of this stuff could definitely go to 1080. And I do have Afterburner up in the top left hand corner just to kind of give you an idea, temps and everything. This never went over 60 degrees Celsius, and it even handles harder to emulate GameCube games like Rogue Squadron 2, still at 720 here, DirectX 11 back in, and with GameCube and Wii emulation using the Dolphin emulator, if you want to use the Vulcan back end, you're going to see very similar performance. Some games may perform better, some may perform worse, but yeah, for DX11 here, since we're on Windows, this has always worked out really well. And Rogue Squadron 2 has always been a harder game to emulate on lower end chipsets. Moving up to some Wii with the same emulator here, 720p, Tatsunoko versus Capcom. And right there, you'll see it dip down just a bit. Those are shaders caching with this. Now, if I went back and did that same move, it wouldn't dip on me. 
That's just something it does here with that DX11 back end. So far with GameCube and Wii using Dolphin on the H4, I've had a really good time with it. Even F-Zero GX runs at full speed. Checking out some PSP, we're at 4X resolution, DirectX 11 back in, Tekken 6, uh, not a super hard game to emulate, I consider this a mid-range game. When it comes down to it, the H4 x86 single board computer does have a wide range of emulation covered, up to PS2. I have not tested Xbox, but the only reason I really haven't is because I know it does require a much more powerful GPU, but there's still thousands and thousands of games that are going to run at full speed on this system. And if you wanted to tackle the hardest to emulate PSP games, even at 4X, not a problem with that DirectX 11 back end. Or again, just like GameCube and Wii, you could swap over to Vulkan if it really matters to you. And finally, we've got some PS2 emulation. So this is about the extent of what we can do here on this N97 chip. Soul Calibur 3, 2x resolution, Vulcan back in. And keep in mind, some easier to emulate PS2 games can go up to 4 and 5x. This is just one of those mid-range games. I also tested God of War 2, and with that one, I did have to go down to 1.5x resolution. But something like Colin McRae Rally 3.0 can run at 2x resolution on this system without a hitch using that Vulcan back in. By the way, this is one of my all-time favorite rally games. And this little H4 really does truck through emulation. Personally, I think Odroid knocked it out of the park with this case, and they're no stranger to these retro cases. They did an N64 case a while ago for the XU4 arm based single board computer. Had a little LCD screen on it, and I'm kind of glad they didn't add that to this to keep that price down. Very simple, easy to assemble, I think it looks good. And of course it was specifically designed for the Odroid H4 and it works amazingly with this x86 SBC. But we've got enough room in here to add something with a bit more power. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.